welcome to Feel Good From Within. I'm Yvette Lieblowitz, your host. This show is all about finding ways to feel good from within that doesn't cost the earth. And today's guest is Jake Eagle, who is a therapist and co-author with Michael Amster. And their book is The Power of Awe, Overcome Burnout and Anxiety, Ease Chronic Pain. Find clarity and purpose in less than one minute per day. I hope you learned so much and this podcast show allows you to grow. Hi everyone, it's Yvette Lee Blowitz from spiritgirl.com and welcome to Feel Good From Within. I'm super excited to be here with you today and with our very special guest, Jake Eagle, who is the co-author of The Power of All with Dr. Michael Amster. We're going to be speaking to Jake Eagle today about their brand new book, The Power of Awe, how to overcome burnout and anxiety, ease chronic pain, find clarity and purpose in less than one minute per day. Jake Eagle, welcome to the show. How are you today? Hi, Yvette. Nice to be here with you. So great to have you on the show. And I want to welcome our global community and audience. Thank you for being here. I'm truly grateful. Jake, before we dive into your co-author book, The Power of Awe, are you happy to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? I am currently living in Hawaii. I spent the last 30 years in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where my wife and I lived. And I was in private practice there as a psychotherapist. Before that, I had another career where I was running small companies, which translated in my therapy practice in that I was very pragmatic, the way I worked with people, very results oriented. And I loved doing that work. I was passionate about it. And then at the time when I turned just a little over 60, we decided to move to Hawaii and basically semi-retire. And we got here and to my complete surprise, I was unhappy. And that was sort of awkward because I had what I call the three H's in my life. I was in Hawaii, I had my good health, and I was with my wife and her name is Hannah. So those are the three H's. But I wasn't happy. And part of it is because I'd given up a very vibrant practice and I'd given up my community. I started to ask this question every day when I woke up, which was, am I thrilled to be alive? Because if you looked at my life objectively, you would say, this guy should be thrilled to be alive, right? And what was interesting is that over a period of several weeks asking that question, I started focusing on things that were wonderful in my life, things where I really was thrilled to be alive. And the more I did it, the better I felt. Then I ended up teaching a course online called Thrilled to be Alive. And in that course, I asked people to meditate for 10 minutes a day. What was so interesting is that half the people said they couldn't do it. They didn't have the time. So I said, well, okay, you don't need to meditate 10 minutes. Can you meditate for 30 seconds? We'll call it a micro meditation. And so people did that. And then at the end of the study, we did a survey and the people who had done these very brief meditations were getting results equal or better to the people who had done the longer meditation. And in the course was my co-author, Michael Amster. And he became really fascinated by how this turned out. And so did I. And so we both decided we would do pilot projects where we would teach people this micro meditation. We called it microdosing mindfulness. And so he did a pilot project. He's a pain specialist. So he worked with his patients who were in chronic pain. And I worked with people who were in emotional distress. We did a three-week program and we got great results. And that is how we got started on this, because what we realized is that when people were doing these very short meditations, they were accessing what I now think is the most powerful of all of the positive emotions. And that is the emotion of awe, A-W-E. And it's not an emotion that we always talk about or think about, but it is remarkably powerful. We ended up going and doing a study at UC Berkeley because one of the leading experts on this subject was at Berkeley. His name is Dacker Keltner. And we did a study with 200 frontline healthcare workers. And this is right at the height of the pandemic and 300 patients. And we did pre-study evaluation We had people write a five-minute diary every day for 21 days. And then at the end of it, we did another post-evaluation. And we just saw tremendous improvements, reduction in burnout. And again, this is in the height of the pandemic, 
reduction in depression, reduction in loneliness, reduction in anxiety, reduction in symptoms related to chronic pain. And then we also saw improvement in terms of mindfulness and well-being. At that point, we knew we really stumbled onto something. Kind of a quick summary of sort of where I came from and how we got into writing this book. That is so incredible. And were you fascinated when people discovered that by doing this, it actually helped their own health and well-being? Yeah, I was completely fascinated. And I'm funnily a little embarrassed, actually, by the subtitle of the book, because the subtitle is Overcoming Burnout and Anxiety, Ease Chronic Pain, Find Clarity and Purpose in Less Than One Minute Per Day. And I've never believed in that kind of thing. I've always felt like you have to do the work. You have to be disciplined and you have to apply yourself. And so here we were presenting to people this opportunity to have all kinds of physical and psychological improvements. And we were saying, and it takes less than a minute a day. So I thought it was absolutely fascinating. And it changed my whole orientation in terms of how I think about working with people. And I think it's really exciting because the majority of the people I speak to who want to meditate don't because they say, I've heard you need to do 10 minutes a day and I don't have 10 minutes a day. So I think that's what I love about the power of all and your research and findings is that it's more accessible to very busy people. When it comes to the title, The Power of All, what is the meaning behind the book title? The meaning is that when you tap into the emotion of awe, you access a power within yourself that's beyond what you typically experience. Now, people experience awe all the time. We'll have experiences in life that are just magical and magnificent out in nature or remarkable things we see. But what's so unique about our work is that we were focusing on awe in the ordinary. In the United States, we would say you don't need to go to the Grand Canyon because that's one of the most spectacular things. I don't know what would be the equivalent in your country. Uluru. The point is that you don't need to go to these extraordinary places. What we're suggesting is that the emotion of awe is available to you all the time. Everything that surrounds you is a potential for you to access the state of awe. This practice takes about 15 seconds. I think this is the key. What happens is that you do it multiple times a day. And every time you do it, you're resetting your nervous system. As your nervous system begins to get a little bit cranked up and you experience tension throughout the day, you stop, you do a moment of awe, you recalibrate, you reorient your nervous system to a parasympathetic state. It's a calmer state. It's a state what's known as either rest and digest or rest and repair. It's a little bit unique though. It's not just parasympathetic. It's parasympathetic with a little bit of charge, with a little bit of stimulation. It's the same state that we're in when we're playful. So if you think about times where you've been playing, say, whether it's with a friend or a child or with a dog or a cat, whatever that is, that sort of energized state where you're very present and you're in a positive state, that's a moment of awe. So when we think of awe, as an example, I went for a walk this morning before our podcast show, Jake, and I just noticed this seagull sitting on this beautiful mosaic artwork. And I looked down and it was nature at its best. I could see the water and an island and it was sunny, and it was lovely. And I felt a moment of awe, appreciation, and like, wow, isn't the world really good? Nature's beautiful. Is that like a moment of awe? I couldn't have described it any better. That's exactly what it is. And just watching you, listening to you talk about it, I can hear it in your voice. When you describe it, your speech slows down, your breathing pattern changes, You're very present with that memory. And that's the moment where your physiology shifts. And you actually just went through all the steps. So we built a model, very simple model. And we use the word AWE, A-W-E, as an acronym. A stands for attention. And what you did in that situation is you gave your full and undivided attention to something that you appreciated, that you found to be amazing. And that can be anything. It can be another person. It can be something in nature. It can even be a thought. You can even have a thought that just captivates you. And that's the attention. And then the W is you wait. 
And we typically say you wait about the length of an inhalation. So it's not long, maybe five seconds. And when you're waiting, what happens is that the, it's called the default mode network. It's the parts of our brain that are kind of responsible for the internal chatter, the monkey mind, it all quiets down. And then as that's quiet and we're focused on something that we appreciate or find to be just amazing, we then have a slightly longer than normal exhalation. And what that does is it enhances whatever sensations are in our body. And because you were looking at something you appreciate or you think is amazing, the sensations in your body are positive. So now you have this longer than normal exhalation, which activates the vagus nerve. And that's this moment of, I think of it as kind of an energetic release. I don't know if you felt that when you were having that moment. I did. I felt like, wow, the world is amazing. Yeah. Which is a very different feeling to when I'm looking on social media at the news of the day and I'm just seeing so many tragic events happening right across the world, which is doom and gloom. And then I went on my walk, as you mentioned, AWE did that practice. I have to say, I couldn't have done the power of all practice if I was looking at my mobile phone, not present. Right. It's not available to us when we're distracted. It requires presence. But here's the really cool thing about it. If you think about all of the spiritual practices and the self-help technologies that are out there, they're all trying to help people come into the present moment. But in a funny way, people struggle with that. They say, well, how do I do that? And what we've done is we've come up with a methodology that very, very simply allows us to do that in part because it's so brief. People can do this for 15 or 20 seconds, even if they're busy or even if they feel like they have a hectic day. Tell a kind of a funny anecdote, which was that you and I were scheduled to meet at a certain time today. And because we're in different time zones, we got it goofed up. So I was there waiting and you didn't know that. And then you sent an email. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll do it. And I had a few moments where I was frustrating myself because I was waiting. And then I decided just take a moment to practice awe. So I looked out the window, I have this fabulous view. I took a moment, I reset my nervous system, calmed myself down, felt completely appreciative of being alive, completely appreciative of the fact that we get to do things like this via Zoom. And I sent you a note and I said, are you still available? And you said, yeah, let's do it. And so here we are. And it's just a very simple example of how we can use a practice like this. And it's incredible you should actually share that story because whilst you were waiting for me, on Sydney time, but I'm on Queensland time. I was out practicing the power of all <laughs> without my mobile phone. And then I get home and I think, oh, here's a message from Jake. And I thought the synchronicity of this event was like, okay, this is now when I need to practice the power of all because I could feel my anxiety levels rise like, oh, quick, get ready, get ready. I've buggered up the time zone. And then I thought, hang on a minute, just take a moment, reset. And like you said, you go through the motions and where I sit, I have a beautiful view of outside, which is what you mentioned, where you can look outside and go, it's going to be okay. Exactly. It'll get done. I'm so grateful I've got nature. And I think that's a beautiful thing that comes from your book and your work with Dr. Michael Amster is being able to do it at home. Right. What you did and what I did is we're changing our level of consciousness. And our model is built on this concept that we've identified three different levels of consciousness. And when I say consciousness, what I mean is basically our state of mind or state of being. For your listeners, if they want to understand this, you can imagine this or you can draw it with a piece of paper and a pen. So if you were to draw a circle in the center of a piece of paper, and it's maybe a couple inches around, and you think of that as what we call safety consciousness. That's where we spend most of our lives. We're very focused on getting things done, taking care of business, making ourselves and those we love feel safe and taken care of. And that's a very significant part of every day. 
If you go beyond that, you draw another circle that's a little bit larger. We refer to that as heart consciousness. And when you enter a state of heart consciousness, it is when you are in a state of deep appreciation or gratitude. As you do that, your physiology and your psychology shifts because you now have a different perspective. If you then go beyond that, draw a third circle. This one's the biggest of the three, and it includes the other two. We refer to that as spacious consciousness. And typically, we access spacious consciousness through some contemplative practice like meditation or qigong or various other forms of martial arts, things that bring us to be very present, kind of that still point. What's so remarkable about awe is that it takes us directly into spacious consciousness. And when we get there, time disappears, words disappear, and we simply experience full, complete presence. So if we're in that state of presence, while focusing on something we value, it's an extraordinary experience. And it's a reminder of what's possible as long as we're alive. So it doesn't matter what we're going through. We're going through a hard time, we're scared, we're upset, we're experiencing conflict. This state that I'm talking to you about is still available to us if we just know how to get there. I love that. This state is still available to us if we just know how to get there. What I have noticed is that if you look every day at the news and all kinds of horrific things are happening in our communities in Australia and I'm sure in the US and right around the world. It's definitely not all when you're looking at the news. It's very contracted. It's that state of safety consciousness where we become fearful and anxious about protecting ourselves and the people we love. Then what I've noticed through your work and book with Dr. Michael Emster is that You can make a conscious decision to no longer want to consume that, I call it an energy or an emotional trigger, and to really just start to focus on living life on Mother Earth in a way of awe. But you have to make a decision and a choice. That's right. And it's a muscle. We talk about it as the awe muscle. And the more you do it, the more you develop it like any muscle. And what happens eventually, that is that you begin to have these moments arising spontaneously. So even when you're just not intentionally doing it, I have this happening now half a dozen or more times a day, just find myself in a state of awe. And as I said, it helps reset my nervous system if I have been preoccupied, if I was watching the news, if I was upsetting myself. Because as you say, there are things in the world that happen and we disturb ourselves, we upset ourselves. You're so right. I much appreciate the experience of awe emotionally versus disturbing myself with disturbing news. And I want to ask you, Jake, obviously you've got your three H's now. This practice and the research you've done has transformed your life immensely. And considering that so many people are suffering at some level in their life, either anxiety, burnout, or depression, or all kinds of things, You mentioned when you started, you first had to sort of look for it and now it's coming up. Can we access or as an example, the moment we're making a cup of coffee, moment we just are reading a really good book. You mentioned there are just so many ways to access it. And I think that's what I love about the practice is it doesn't cost you the earth. That's right. And not only can we access it during those things like making a cup of coffee or cooking a meal or reading a book, but we can use it as a preventative. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you have a partner in life and you've had some disagreement and you decide you're going to have a conversation. Say, we need to sit down and talk about this. That's a moment where a lot of people get a little tense. They get worried about the outcome and how it will go. So they go into that conversation in a state of safety consciousness. They bring a certain energy and anxiety with them. If you understand the awe practice, before you have that conversation with your partner, you take literally a half a minute, you access a state of awe, you shift your consciousness, you shift your energy, you shift your nervous system. And now you go into that conversation in a much more constructive and resourceful way. 
and other people pick up on our nervous system. So if I'm in a state of awe and you begin to interact with me, you sense that. You detect that there's something going on and it's generally very attractive and appealing. We want to be around that kind of energy. I love that. And in your book, you've got practices. There are meditation practices. You go through attention, give your full focus to something, wait, take a deep breath and appreciate that thing. Exhale and expand as you exhale slowly. Allow your feelings to expand and grow. This practice, five to 15 seconds, two or three times a day, that's all, is absolutely incredible and such a gift to the world. And I'm so glad that you stumbled across it all because you decided to move to Hawaii after right. being a psychotherapist for 30 years of doing that. And I wish I had known this because I think this would have facilitated my work with people in a really significant way. Wow. Basically, as a therapist, you can talk to clients and if they're in a state of safety consciousness, which they usually are, it makes it an uphill struggle to help them feel better. But if I help them shift their level of consciousness that opens up all sorts of possibilities in terms of how we can work together and what they can envision. Because they're in touch with a different perspective. They experience themselves and the world in a completely different way when they access the emotion of awe. So does that mean for therapists, teacher or parents, if we are experiencing more awe, you mentioned the spacious consciousness Obviously, this is going to bring down a lot of stress levels and anxiety and right. help everyone's nervous system. Yes. And that's why I want to see us introducing this to children at a young age. If we learned these skills when we were in grammar school or junior high or high school or whatever your equivalent is, it would give us a really powerful way to manage our nervous system. For the most part, people don't know how to reset their nervous system quickly and easily. A lot of people use a breathing technique to do that. And a breathing technique can be effective, but if you're in a state of distress, it won't necessarily bring in the kind of relief that awe will bring in. Because with the awe practice, we're shifting our attention in the direction of something we value, appreciate, or find to be amazing. And as soon as we do that, it completely alters our chemistry and our neurotransmitters and our nervous system is literally reset, like I say, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. That is unbelievable. When it comes to your own self-care rituals, what are some things you do to take care of your own self to prevent burnout? Every morning when I get up, I go outside and I take a minute or two minutes to really absorb the awe that is in my life. So I, I make it a very focused way to start my day. And then every night when I go to bed, no matter what the weather is or what's going on, I go outside on the lanai, our porch, and I look at the sky, the night sky. And again, I take the time to do an awe practice, kind of an extended awe practice, where I'm really allowing myself to soak in the beauty that surrounds me. And I do that no matter what's going on, no matter how I feel. And every time I do it, I'm so grateful that I took that minute or two minutes. That's my absolute every morning and every night. And then typically during the day, in between tasks, I'll typically stop and try and do a very brief awe practice. But as I mentioned to you, it's happening spontaneously. I'm not having to think about it. One of the things we talk about in this work is that we replace force, we replace trying with presence. So instead of having to have willpower and discipline and work hard at something, we're saying, don't approach this in that way. This is very, very easy and organic. All you have to do is give yourself, again, 15, 20, 30 seconds to find the beauty that surrounds you. It's around us all the time. We just have to find it. I love that. To find the beauty, it surrounds us all the time. We just have to find that. I'm noticing when I experience awe, also a deep sense of gratitude. Yes. If you think of that model of safety and then heart and then spacious, gratitude is in the heart realm. We often can describe it. When we go beyond gratitude, we're going into spacious consciousness. It's beyond gratitude. 
we're almost speechless. We don't have words. And that is part of the experience of awe, is that I cannot reduce what I'm feeling to words. And in a way, by not reducing my experience to words, I'm allowing it to be more powerful. Because words are kind of limiting, if you think about it. We have these amazing experiences, and then we try to communicate it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when we do it, we're shrinking the experience and trying to define it. In a moment of awe, oftentimes, I never try to describe it to another person. I just say, oh, my gosh, that was just remarkable. But I don't try and explain how or why it was remarkable. That's such a great insight tip. But in those moments of awe, if we can allow ourselves to live in the silence, the moment will last longer. In those moments of awe, to live in the silence, those moments will last longer. Yes, and penetrate us more deeply. And it's such a contrast to having a mobile phone then trying to capture something that's amazing and then thinking about capturing it for the people I want to show it to, which is, once again, this thinking mind logically doing, and I'm not fully in the moment. When we practice our awe, we don't need to every single minute have our phone capturing, there's the night sky, there's the nice cup of coffee, oh, there's the clouds, there's the bird. I think that (laughs) we could spend less time trying to catalog our experience and just simply have our experience. However, I will tell you that on our website, which is thepowerofawe.com, we've created a page where people can upload moments of awe. And so people are using their phones to do that. The reason we did it, Yvette, is because we know that people aren't going to put their phones down completely. So this is a chance when you're on your phone or at your desktop computer to go to thepowerofawe.com, look for the Moments of Awe page, and see what other people find to be awe-inspiring. And that tends to stimulate the awe within us. So we realize it's probably better if people aren't on their phone, but if they are on their phone, at least this is another way to experience awe. I'm going to upload some photos. Great. Especially when I go to the Maldives. Okay. I've got to fess up. I do have my mobile phone out and I want to capture the colors of the water because then when I come home, I want to keep looking at it over and over and over again at times, which was very beneficial during COVID when we couldn't travel. And I was able to look at that. What's fun is that we can access awe through our memory. In other words, we could be locked in a room with nothing to look at and we could remember a time of awe. We could remember if you had a wonderfully deep, meaningful relationship with your grandfather, your grandmother, or a childhood friend, just going back and thinking about that person, you can recreate a moment of awe. I love that. And before we say goodbye, what is your hope for your newfound book readers or audio book listeners? My hope is that people will slow down and really savor the book and realize how accessible this experience is. In the book, we have about three dozen experiences that you can use to guide you. And there are all sorts of different things. You can do most of them very simply. You don't have to go anyplace extravagant. And they're basically a way to build that awe muscle. I really encourage people to slow down. It's not a race. It's about slowing down, being present, and focusing on these things that we deeply move ourselves with when we give our full attention. I love your work, Jake Eagle and Dr. Michael Amster. Gratitude to you both and everyone who took part in your research and everyone who's brought the book to fruition because I just feel during these times where we have a mental health crisis, we've got some big challenges to tackle. However, through the power of all, If anyone is working at schools or universities or I'm getting goosebumps while I say this, so that's always a good sign. Really, if you're in the mental health space or you just want to learn about it for yourself so you can feel good from within, I recommend grabbing a copy of The Power of All 
because like you said, Jake Eagle, you wish you had this, especially in your career as a psychotherapist for the 30 years. If we can teach this to kids now, and doesn't matter what age you are, we can learn this at any age. This could really help our mental health and well-being, which is so important. Not only does it not matter what age you are, but one last thing I'll say that is that mm. this is also very helpful for people who are older and dealing with end of life issues. Mm. That's a particular kind of anxiety that there are not necessarily great solutions for. It's called existential anxiety, dealing with problems or challenges related to being human where there's no clear answer. There's not a great solution to the fact that we're all mortal, right? Yeah. But awe is a way to take ourselves to a place where we go beyond our fear, beyond our anxiety, and it's incredibly beneficial. So this would be such a good practice in our aged care homes and retirement yes. villages. Yeah. So everyone who works at an aged care and retirement village Grab a copy of The Power of All and give it to your activities officer and put it in your library so your residents can have the opportunity to read it. But I was just thinking when it comes to aged care, one of the greatest challenges that have been happening over the last couple of years has definitely been isolation and loneliness. And like you mentioned then with the end of life, this book is just so relevant and the practices for so many areas. And loneliness, this is a really unique feature of awe in that we measured this in our study. And what we found was that when people feel lonely, they often are seeking to connect with someone or something beyond themselves. Awe allows us to do that even if we're alone. We can connect with something that's greater than ourselves. And when we do that, our perception of loneliness decreases. Wow. As an example, Jake, where if you are looking at, say, beautiful video footage of rainforests and rivers and these landscapes with beautiful music, even if someone was in, say, the aged care home in their wheelchair and can't get out, that would be a way to bring some awe into their life. Yes. And it's so individual. It could be what you mm. just described. It could be listening to a piece of music. It could be someone reading poetry to you. It could be a photograph of a family member. It could be an animal, a dog or a cat. There's so many ways because yeah. each one of us finds beauty in different things in different ways. And the key is to surround ourselves with that as much as we can and to notice it. And the biggest message is we all need to slow down in order to experience the power of all. Yes. And thank you for bringing this yeah. to people in Australia. I've had so many people from there say, how can we learn about this? And now I can direct them to your podcast. So that's great. I'm so grateful. And I'm just really blessed and grateful that we had this opportunity. So thank you so much, Jake Eagle, mm -hmm. for all the work you do. And I just know in my heart of hearts, this is going to help everyone listening in today and this generation, but I always think about eight generations to come. Yes. Thank you for making a difference in the world. Thank you for acknowledging and helping us share this work. See you, Jake. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening in to Feel Good From Within with Yvette Lieblo at Spark Girl Podcast. I hope you found this conversation of interest and of benefit to you. In support, I would love for you to subscribe to Feel Good From Within with Yvette Lieblo on any podcast app you listen to the show through or on YouTube or Rumble too. And to also leave a five-star rating and a review of what you think too. Be sure to share this show with your family, friends, and community and to subscribe to my mailing list at spiritgirl.com, eventlyblowitz.com, or feelgoodfromwithin.com and to follow Spirit Girl, Yvette Lee Blowitz, or Feel Good From Within on any social media app. And together, let's feel good from within.